Okay, so this week we are going to do experiment on thermal conductivity. Basically, we are going to study to see which material is better thermal conductor. We have uh, on this heat conduction apparatus, we have a brass, we have aluminum here, we have stainless steel, and we have a brass that has less width than the first one. So the experimental setup looks like this. You have this heat conduction apparatus here. It's always set here on heat. You shouldn't move this. Then it is connected to the power source that's set to 5 volts and 0.5 milliamps. This is already preset for you, so you don't need to change anything. And then we are measuring temperature using this temperature array, which is connected to this uh, passport link with the computer. So for this experiment, we're going to use computer. So every time we use computer for uh, the experiment, first I'm going to show you how to take the data, and then I will record the screen of the computer to show you on the end how to analyze the data. First part of the experiment, power supply should be off, simply because you want to see what is the room temperature for these materials here. On this temperature array, you have thermistors that are labeled with T1, T2, T3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So the ones that are close to the center here are called thermistors that measure the close temperatures, and these are the far temperatures. So always look at the numbering here, because on this side here, on the left-hand side, T2 and T6 are close ones, but on the right-hand side, T3 and T7 are the close ones. So first we want to look for the uh, heat conduction for the brass, aluminum, and steel. And we are going to use the far thermistors first. So you're going to drag T1, T5, and T8 to the graph. So basically you're just going to come here. Take, I will show you this when we do the uh, data analysis on the end. You're going to take the temperature, drag it down to the graph, T1 temperature 5 to the same graph, and temperature T8 to the same graph. You can enlarge graph here by clicking on this square to maximize it. So the first thing is we are going to see the room temperature of these three elements. So just click here on the start and let it record for some time. As you can see, all of them have the same temperature, which is around 20 degrees, actually here is 21 degrees Celsius. So not exchanging, we're going to stop this. So this is your basically zero reading, okay? So then you're going to click here on experiment and then delete all data runs and then you're going to delete everything. Okay, so then what you're going to do the data collection for this experiment takes only 10 minutes. And then after that, everything is the data analysis. So what you will do is you will return this protectors on the top here. You're going to press start to start taking the data for about five seconds. And then you're going to turn on the power supply. And now you will have to wait for 10 minutes to finish the data collection. During that time, uh, while you're waiting, you can go ahead and answer the questions on the end of the experiment. And once you're done with taking data, you can proceed with data analysis. I will, will record the screen of the computer for the analysis part of this experiment. From now on, we are going to talk about analyzing the data that you collected using the Data Studio. So after collecting the data for 10 minutes, you're asked to print a graph for temperature T1, T5, and T8 as a function of time. So you're going to take temperature T1, drag and drop it on graph here, same for T5, and for T8. So now this graph represents the increase in temperature as a function of time for three materials. The red line here is T1, that is the brass, 
purple line here represents the temperature as a function of time for aluminum, and the dark blue line here represents the temperature as a function of time for stainless steel. Next, you need to print this graph for your own records. So before you print anything, you're going to change the name here from graph 1 to your names, you and your partner. Then you're going to click on File, and then Print, and then print two copies of the graph for each person. It is important that you label your graphs with your names, so when the paper comes out of printer, you know which one belongs to you. Okay, now we are moving on to step 8. The three temperature readings used in the previous step were taken by thermistor on the far end of each metal bar. Notice that each bar has a thermistor placed close to the heat source as well. For example, T1 is a far ending for the wide brass plate and T2 is the close one. We need to create a temperature versus time graph for each material. Each graph must include close and far temperature readings of the material. So now we are going to take temperature T1, that is far 1 for brass, bring it to a graph. And then T2 is a close 1 for the brass. And then we can rename this, name it as the material, and then write your names. Same we are going to do for the aluminum. For the aluminum, far 1 is T5 and close 1 is T6. So we're going to take T5 to graph and then T6 here. And we are going to rename the file here. And also write your names. Okay, and now we are going to create the same graph for the stainless steel. For stainless steel, T7 is close, drag and drop it to a graph, and T8 is the far thermistor, the same graph here. So we have close and far. And we are going to rename this one as well, steel, and then write your names. So now you're ready to move along and uh, record the moment at which each temperature far and close started to increase. We will record these moments, times, in the table 1 on the page 78. So what will you do? You will go back to the brass temperatures. Green one here is the close temperature and red one is the far temperature. So we are going to highlight here green one which is close, and then we're going to choose this smart tool here and bring it to a moment where the temperature started increasing. And then we are going to record the time, it is 13 seconds. When you're done with that, you can turn off smart tool. Then you're going to highlight the red curve, which represents the far temperature, and click on the smart tool go down and find the moment where the temperature started increasing and that is at 28 seconds same you're going to do for aluminum double click here to move to the aluminum highlight the purple one that is the far click on the smart tool go down Record the time, 14.5 seconds. You can uncheck it, then highlight the close one, click on the smart tool, and then go down and record it. It's 10.5 seconds. Same, you're going to proceed with the steel. Okay, so now when you're done with this, calculating the velocity of the uh, heat pulse. You're, we are going to move to step number 9. Here we are going to calculate the temperature difference between the close and far thermistors for all three bars that we studied before. So now you're going to click on Calculate and then start typing here. Type DT underscore brass 
no spaces is equal to T2 minus T1. It's always going to be close minus far. Then you're going to click accept and it says here you need to define variable T2 and you need to define variable T1. So for T2, you're going to take temperature 2, drag and drop here. And then same for temperature 1, you're going to drag and drop it here. Okay, once you're done, you're going to click on accept. Then under properties, here you're going to raise the Y variable and write DT. And then for units, is going to be Celsius. Click on OK, and you're done. You have DT for brass. Now you're going to follow the same procedure to define DT for other two bars. We need to be sure that we subtract the far temperature from the close temperature. Now you're going to display all these three calculations in a delta T versus time graph. Now we are going to take DT for brass drag and drop to graph and then we're going to do the same thing for aluminum and we're going to do the same thing for steel you can maximize the graph by clicking here on the square so green line here represents steel red line here represents change in temperature for uh, aluminum and the pink line represents change in temperature for brass. And we're noticing also that these peaks here are occurring at different times for different materials. So now we are going to go ahead and locate these peaks and write down a table to a time at which each of these peaks are occurring. And also we are going to record the uh, delta T, which is a final equilibrium value for each material. So first, let's record the times. You can highlight the first one, which is pink, that is brass. Click on the Smart Tool, come down, find the peak, and record the uh, time. And then you're going to record this equilibrium delta T. Then you're going to turn off this tool and do the same thing for the other two materials. OK, so now you're done with completing the table, and you can calculate the rate of the heat flow for each of these um, materials using the values for delta T and using the values for Ks that were provided in, in your information sheet. Finally, you're going to create a graph of delta T for the narrow brass bar, and you're going to include the curve for the wide bar in the same plot. So here you see the blue curve represents the uh, delta T for narrow brass, and then the pink one represents the delta T for the wide brass. So now you're ready to complete the rest of the steps in your laboratory manual.